it felt very big in scope, but it felt like a lot of fun too, like a really interesting project to take on. So it, I just remember thinking that it's very big and it had a lot of working parts, and but being really excited by the challenge of it. So that. And it wasn't until later where I heard actual numbers um, that put, you know, a affirmation stamp on that initial reaction that it was going to be the largest film I've ever pretty much taken on. There was probably close to a thousand speaking part costumes, just the speaking parts, and then 7,000 background. So that, that's a lot of costumes um, for one film. And very different types of characters for the speaking parts and the principals and, uh, and very different sort of um, episodes of genres that we did for different scenes. Like there was never like, oh, this is another scene where there's a lot of pedestrians, so to speak. It was, they were like capsules of this is this look, this is this look, this is this look, this is this look. And there were, ne there were not a lot of repeats or... Uh, ability to to share um, one look to another look, and and that was part of the great part. That was part of the great part of it, and it was also part of the challenge. It was a lot of uh, research about the underbelly of Los Angeles and and the underbelly, and it was we was primarily stuck with Los Angeles, but I found like there were research material that came from all over the world to just give us inspiration for certain things and. Um, a lot of silent films, looking at silent movies and watching them and watching them over and over again to like what, what, look at the, the craftsmanship of what, of what and how they made those costumes. And so it was infinite the amount of research we did. And you, I could still be researching the movie now and we're almost finished shooting. Like I could re research this movie for the rest of my life and I would still find things that are really interesting that we could have used as inspiration. But yet at a certain point you had to stop she has a persona that she performs in, and then what she, she's like, what she wears to Don Wallach's, and that's to me is strong, and it's not, it's kind of who she is, and it's kind of ballsy. Then there's the performance wear that she wears when she's asked to do parts that she probably not necessarily wanted to take at Kinescope, and it's a lot more revealing and a lot more um, vulnerable. And I don't think that that would be necessarily her choice of what she wears. And then what she chooses to wear in her real life is strong and it's sexy, but it's not necessarily revealing. It's classic and just sort of has a lot of style. And so I think to me that's the real woman and that she was just like she was living in the world that she lived in. And that's where that's where they wanted an that Asian American actress to be. They wanted her to be in these sort of subservient kind of costumes that would put her in a place that was not equal to other whites and other Americans and other women. And so it's subservient in some level. And so, but in her real life, she's not, she doesn't, she doesn't take any punches in her real life. And that's was the dichotomy in her closet for me. Like that's how I, like what she, when she chooses what she wears, it's, it's poised and elegant and it's, not, it's who she is. It's not who someone else is telling her to be. Some things we were inspired definitely by Clara Bow, like, uh, and some other just period research that we found. There was a uh, picture of Clara in overalls. She did have something on underneath, but we also found another photo of, of a woman without anything on underneath the overalls. And that was something I was like, we need to try this on, on Nellie. So we found like a vintage pair and recreated, uh, like, you know, fit perfectly the way that it needed to fit and cover what it needed to cover. But, uh, and that we ended up using at the pool party. We figured out Nellie together. I really believe that. And um, she was open to all avenues. But I feel like we discovered Nellie. Par I, mean, I know that she did a lot of work on her own, but I know that we did a lot of discovery of the character of Nellie in the fitting room. For sure, because it was very helpful, and she has, she's one of the most intuitive actors I've ever worked with, and so nice and so lovely, and just smart as a whip. And she knew her character inside out, and would come up together. 
we came up with a lot of solutions, but a lot of times she's very production and filmmaker savvy. You try to find something that feels um, timeless and contemporary almost and relatable and that is also a something that is could very legitimately come from the 1920s. Absolutely. It just makes it so it doesn't feel like this is this precious thing that we're looking at and it's there's a way to let the audience in because it's something that they can that that's not that um offhandish sort of period veneer. It's something that's like visceral and relatable and yeah, I mean, there's no reason why someone couldn't wear what Nellie wears to the Wally party to a club today. It's awesome. We both said, I don't think he's the type of character that is very formal all the time. Like, I don't think he, on the days where he shows up to set or when he's looking at footage, it's not always that he's in a suit and certainly not a tie. I think he's, he owns it and he's much more casual than that. And like, when he dresses up, he's in his tuxedo, but it's not like he inhabits his life in suits and ties and in a formal way. We sourced fabrics from all over the world, but mostly Europe. Um, we sourced fabric from Europe, um, and then we found a lot of great fabric um, in Los Angeles and in New York. We, we, we did find some domestically, too, but the suitings for the men primarily came from overseas. Like, you can't, they just don't weave it in the United States anymore, and we were looking for very heavyweight because heavyweight suitings, which nowadays you buy, if you bought a suit today, it would be maybe the heaviest would be like a nine ounce. And we were, I was looking for 12, 13, 14 ounce wools. And so those, to source those, we had to go overseas. His ideas of the character arc of Manny were very, were, he, he knew him inside and out. And we were very much in agreement on how he starts and that Manny is a man of very few, very little means, and he doesn't have a ton of clothes. And I think that he wears um, he wears a pair of black pants and a white shirt. He doesn't have a tuxedo shirt. He wears just a white button down, and he has somehow gotten his hands on a tuxedo jacket and a bow tie. And that's how he cobbles together his look for the Wallach party. But we see him without the jacket and the tie in the very beginning. And he wears those pants and that shirt I mean, we have multiples of them, but he wears that through his whole arc while working for Jack. Like, he gets one sport coat and one overcoat. And we had another sport coat, but we never ended up using it because it just felt like he's not making that much while he's working for Jack. And and so it was the choice of, like, the lack of clothes for him or the lack of new clothes for him and also the structure of the clothes. I think that part of it is the love of filmmaking, and the love of film, you know, and showing that there was a, in, in the silent movie era, there was true art was being made and people were allowed to like express themselves in a way that um, got a little bit squelched in the beginning of sound. And so, per, I mean, this is, I, I've never spoken to Damien about this, but it's like, it's this love of film, like what's happening now in terms of what studios and what filmmakers are making like there are people who are still making movies that are about people and life and the way that Babylon is but there's also a lot of other um, static in the universe about what sells a lot of tickets and not that we don't want this movie to make money but I mean I think that this movie is about making art I think it's just going to be a, a visual and emotional feast. You're just going to sit down and go on this ride. And when, you, when the f film ends, you're just going to be like, what just happened? Wow. Can I go see it again? <laughs>